Welcome to this video on Geology Basics. Today we're going to talk about sedimentary rocks. The learning targets for this video are recognizing and illustrating the sedimentary rock position within the rock cycle, categorizing sedimentary rocks, and analyzing sedimentary structures for clues to their depositional environments. Also, looking at depositional environments and thinking about what kinds of structures you might expect to see. So first of all, sedimentary rocks are the products of weathering of earth materials, and they represent a wide variety of different sedimentary environments. And they fall into three general categories, plastic or detrital, chemical, and organic. Now, while sedimentary rocks only make up about 5% of the earth's crust, about 75% of all surface outcrops are made up of sedimentary rocks. So chances are, if you're going out in the field, or if you're driving down the road through a road cut, you might see sedimentary rocks. Let's talk first about detrital or clastic sedimentary rocks. There is a cycle of formation for these rocks, and it begins with the weathering of some original earth materials. That weathered material is then eroded away, transported, deposited, and finally compacted and cemented or lithified into a sedimentary rock where it might be eroded and transported and deposited and lithified again. So sedimentary rocks can be made of any type of earth material. They can be weathered products from igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, or other sedimentary rocks. Within the category of detrital sedimentary rocks, the rocks are classified by grain size. And these uh, detrital or clastic sedimentary rocks contain a wide range of minerals or other rock fragments. The grain sizes that they're generally classified into are gravel, being two millimeters or larger, sand, 0.05 to two millimeters, silt, 0.05 to 0.002 millimeters, or clay, less than 0.002 millimeters in size. And you can see some of the common names for those sedimentary rocks here, starting at the top of the chart with the gravel-sized particles, those being conglomerate or breccia. These are typically poorly sorted sedimentary rocks, with the difference between the two being that the particles in conglomerates are rounded and the particles in breccia are angular. In the sand size particles, we typically have two or three different types of sand stones. Here you see sandstone that is a quartz rich sandstone. You see an arco sandstone, which would contain, contain some feldspars. And we also sometimes have a gray wacky sandstone, which contains clay. In the silt side particles, we find siltstone and finer yet in the clay size particles, either shale or mudstones. Turning now to the other types of sedimentary rocks, so chemical or organic sedimentary rocks. Turning now to the classification of chemical or organic sedimentary rocks. First of all, we have some limestones which may appear to be clastic because they are made up of fragments or shells or fossils. These have a wide variety of grain sizes. Some are very young and are made up of young pieces of shells that have washed around on a beach, such as coquina. And some are older, being made up of well-cemented fossil grains. We also have crystalline limestones. The crystalline limestones are calcium rich, and these precipitate out of a solution. Other types of chemical sedimentary rocks include evaporites, such as chert, flint and jasper, those are silica rich, gypsum, or even rock salt. And finally, we have bituminous coal, and bituminous coal is an initial stage of coal formation before it's metamorphosed. Turning now to some of the sedimentary structures that help us predict the depositional environments, or the depositional environments that would help us predict the rock types. So at the top of this page, we can see cross bedding and the cross bedding was formed by a current that was flowing in one direction. So think river or stream here. And you can see on the right side, the cartoon that shows the uh, way that those sand grains in this case, it's typical in a sandstone, those sand grains might roll up that little slope and then tumble down and be deposited forming those cross beds. 
Now you can determine the direction that the current moves in by these cross beds, but from the rocks that are shown here in the picture, you can also see that the current direction has shifted multiple times throughout the depositional history of this outcrop. In the center section, we see a nice picture of mud cracks. Now, mud cracks typically form when a wet clay or mud dries out and shrinks, and sometimes these can be preserved in rocks. They help us tell which way is up on the strata. On the right side in the middle, you see some symmetrical ripple marks. These are different than the cross beds. The cross beds are asymmetrical. These are symmetrical because they were formed by wave action. So as the waves slosh in and out, they move the sediment, the sand-sized grains, back and forth and form these symmetrical ripple marks. And finally, at the bottom, we see examples of bioturbation. So we see trace fossils left behind as critters have crawled across, leaving trails, or dug through sediment, leaving their burrows. Okay, so I think we're ready to go back and check on the learning targets and uh, take the mastery check quiz. So here are our learning targets. Recognizing the position of sedimentary rocks in the rock cycle, categorizing sedimentary rocks, and analyzing sedimentary rock structures for clues to their depositional environments. See you in class.